Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Michael Calverly, and it's a question about antenna tuners, specifically remote antenna tuners. Um, Michael is KI5AE, and he uh, sends a question. Uh, in your videos about antennas and tuners, you stated that in some cases it is best to have a tuner at the base of the antenna, and that is true. It's especially helpful for vertical antennas. My question is, how is the tuner powered? Okay, is it powered from the shack's power supply? Then I would imagine that there is a distance restriction between the tuner and the power supply. My next question is, could a small solar panel be attached to the mast to supply power to the tuner during the day? However, that would mitigate using the tuner at night. Okay, there's a couple different ways of doing this. Uh, if you buy the tuner, like you've got an ICOM radio and you buy the tuner uh, from ICON, ICOM, and they have one, uh, there's a separate cable that goes out and attaches to the uh, antenna tuner. The cable's not terribly long. You may have to extend it in some cases, but there's a jack in the back of the antenna tuner that allows the radio and the tuner to communicate. Now, there's uh, another way of doing this that MFJ and LDG both use, and that is that they actually power it using DC through the coax cable. There's no separate cable. So, uh, and it will tell you in the manual how much cable, but it's a lot more than you might think it is because it actually takes very little power. Uh, these, these tuners don't turn a knob on a capacitor or anything like that. They switch in and out values of capacitance and inductance. Uh, to get what they need. So it's just a little power for a very lightweight relay uh, to do that. So what you do is you connect up your uh, tuner way out there, bring the coax in, and in the station there's something called a bias T. And this same idea, bias T, can also be used to send power down the coax line to whatever it is that you want to power. So let me show you how that works. Okay, so here's your coax cable. And you break it right here. You put a capacitor in there. It's a pretty big capacitor. So it lets all of the uh, energy from your transceiver go right on through. Okay. Then right here, you've got a coil, and the coil is very high impedance to the RF, but it will pass DC. So you put a coil over here. So the RF path, and I want to show the RF, well, first of all, let's get down to what is here, 12 You have a power source here, and this goes to the shield of the coil. And over here, you have a load, load, which is actually the electronics in the tuner. You've got your coil. So this goes to the antenna. This goes to the transceiver. Okay, and this is the shield of the coil, which, of course, is grounded. So you put 12 volts on it like this, and this comes over the cable, and then down here, the RF, I'll just draw the signal paths in a different color. This is the signal path for the RF. And this is the signal path for the 12 volts. Okay? And of course this is grounded out there too. 
So this creates something called a bias T. I have one over here for my receive only antenna. So this is how it's done by using a bias T. This method, the using the bias T, is used by LDG and MFJ, uh, among others. MFJ has a pretty complete series of these remote tuners. And then other tuners like from ICOM, uh, Yesu, and Kenwood use a separate control cable that goes out to it. So either way you want to do it. I like the bias T because it's simple. I mean, it just goes right up through the cable. It doesn't have to do anything fancy. So I hope that answers your question there. Um, if you've gotten this far, maybe you find this channel particularly interesting and you'd like to subscribe, please do so. Click like and click the bell. And until we next meet, 73.